Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry for the shaky camera. I nearly just fell on my bottom. So we're in Clumber this morning. Sun's almost up. Another 15 minutes and it'll be over the horizon. It's 7.30, sunrise at 7.45 today. But we've come out to have a little bit of a fungi forage in South Clumber. Yesterday evening I walked the dogs and I came across a wonderful outcrop of bay bullets and uh, well I harvested quite a few. There were some rather big ones. I'll just put a clip in here to show you. It was about the size of a small dinner plate which is rather big for a bullet and uh, oh, there was also a couple of seps there as well, Belitis edulis and uh, well I thought I'd come back this morning and have another look because out of all the mushrooms that I do enjoy foraging for I tend not to pick them unless I'm going to eat them, I'll just leave them in situ doesn't do them any harm, you're not preventing the spores from dispersing or anything like that uh, you can pick away pick to your heart's content but I tend to leave them for somebody else who's probably gonna use them for culinary purposes rather than just picking them for the sake of it so I like finding the different varieties and styles of mushrooms but uh, I'll only eat a certain few some field mushrooms and some bullets and with the bullets I like to dry them out with the dehydrator and save them for cooking later on. So we're going to carry on with the walk. It's a bit of a shaky camera at the moment, holding it like this. So uh, I'll cut back. Oh, I'm falling over. I'll cut back if we find anything interesting, which I hope we do. I can't stay long. I've got. Um, a pallet being collected from the brewery this morning, returning some of the the uh, well the pallets. There's a stack of pallets going back to the can manufacturers or can distributors, rather. So I don't know what time they're coming. I'm risking it. I'm going to stay out here till about nine-ish, and then head on back. But fingers crossed, we'll come across some wonderful fungi. And if we don't, the dogs have had a bloody good time anyway, haven't they? So, uh, yeah, I'll cut back if we find anything, boys. Well, here's an edible, which I won't be picking today, but some other people might want to. This is a parasol mushroom. They do make good eating, but uh, they're not top of my list. So, I'll be leaving this one for somebody else. It actually looks like... It's already a bit shaggy, so something might have had a go at that already. But uh, if you're looking for a suitable habitat, anywhere with oak and pine is perfect for seps and uh, the bullet family because the mushrooms have a mycorrhizal symbiosis with the roots of the trees. So this is exactly the right kind of habitat that we want to be looking for. You'll also find Amanita muscaria or the fly agaric around here as well and uh, wherever you find fly agarics there's a distinct possibility that you may find a sep or two or a bay bullet or any of the other bullet family. This is ideal habitat look. Mossy ground interspersed with grasses oak and pine, a little bit of bramble cover, some heather dotted around. We might get lucky this morning. Well, we might not. It's a little bit like fishing. Haha. <laughs> so, Amanita muscaria, the fly agaric. There's one that's been trampled on already. So, that's our first indication that we're in the red spot. Let's just get through this broom 
and we'll continue to walk through the young oak trees. We've not had to come far and we've come across another fine example of a fly garrick. Somebody's kicked over one of his friends here and uh, yeah for you magic mushroom hunters well get stuck in boys because these are very similar to well they are magic mushrooms but they have a different effect I believe to your psilocybin style mushrooms this is not a set you can tell with the gills um, I do know what this mushroom is I just can't recall what it what the name is off the top of my head I believe this is also an edible but I'll have to double check that there's a few of them dotted around here again growing in the right place also associated with silver birch trees you can see there's a few on the floor there there's something down here there's another agaric there so yeah quite a selection and we're still in the first field although I can hear a few dogs barking now so Reg come here boy well we got disturbed a little bit by some dogs there so we've carried on walking we didn't have to get too far and we've come across a set so unfortunately this little fellow is on the main path or what you could be could be conceived as a path and he's been damaged stood on possibly even peed on Aha! but my keen eye has spotted another one so look at that so this is either a penny bun or a bay bullet either way this little beauty and it's a small specimen but either way this little beauty is going in to my bag this has just come up this morning you can see how glistening the cap is so hopefully we'll find quite a few more of these little beauties but there we go a babylet and if not a babylet then Belitis edulis or aka Porcini or Sep I'm not sure because it's a little on the small side but it is definitely an edible fungus so we'll keep looking. Oh, hello sunshine. What are you? <laughs> there we go. Another one. Within inches. Now this can only be confused with one other variety really, which is the bitter birch bullet or the bitter bullet. There's a few bitter ones out there. And the easiest way to distinguish between the two is just have a little nibble of the flesh and you'll realize that whilst it's not toxic it is extremely astringent and it'll ruin any dish that you go ahead and put it in so there's a bit of advice but you'll notice on this specimen it doesn't have gills it has spores that pores even and that's one real easy identifying feature also a big thick stem a lot of the other bullets don't have a thick stem like this does so we'll get these in the bag before anybody comes because I'm aware that the dogs are off the lead and uh, that's a start off a ten I reckon boys brilliant some wonderfully large parasol mushrooms here look at the size of this bad boy like this really is a monster there's one down here as well and there's a couple of uh, small ones poking their head through but again not on today's shopping list and a bit close to a watering station for the cows so we'll give that a miss just in case anyway I don't want to be eating that style of mushroom or collecting them today so we'll just keep on walking on by now the porcinis and the seps can be well the same thing actually but they can be a little bit tricky to spot when they're when they're as small as those two that I've just found they do grow a lot bigger but of course you can leave them maybe come back six hours later or the next day but you run the risk of either somebody else finding them 
or something else finding them and generally what tends to happen is the deer will have a nibble but more likely the slugs will get in there and they'll destroy the cap and uh, that will open up the door for the gnats to lay their eggs in there and the whole thing will become infested with maggots there's a lovely bracket fungus on that uh, piece of fallen birch tree there I mean this place is absolutely stuffed with different types of fungi and uh, end of October, start of November is exactly the right time to come looking for them and we've had a pretty cold morning today got down to about five degrees just before dawn and that tends to spur on the mushroom growth a little bit it has been rather warm of recent weeks so things have been out but not in huge abundance and I expect the next week or two to be an absolute a feast of fungi if we keep coming out for a look I mean again if I was in the market for parasols I'd not be going hungry this evening I've just walked past two or three and look at this for a lovely little outcrop some beauties twin nipple there these ones have captured a little bit of the dew from this morning or a bit of rain last night in their concave tops but the quest for Puccini continues Jesus Christ I know he fell over now we just passed another dog walker didn't we boys and I took a detour so I didn't have to put the dogs on the lead and uh, we came across this so ladies and gentlemen say hello to this morning's first bay bullet maybe a day or so old got some colour to him but a beauty nonetheless we'll pop that there we'll come and pick his friend over here who seems actually He's a bit too moth eaten, so we're going to leave that one. And the same with that. So, just because they're there doesn't mean you have to take them. But this one is in fine fettle. And boy, is it a beauty. So, it doesn't seem to be damaged anywhere. It's got a nice looking cap. The paws have got some colour to them, but they do go like an olivey green colour. It's a bit more green to me than it is on the camera. And, uh, well, yeah, you can see the size of it in my hand. That's a beauty. So that's a babelet. That's not a sep. The seps have much thicker stems and far whiter paws underneath. And uh, usually a smaller cap than that but there's no chance you're not going to recognize them they're so easily distinguishable so looking out at the field here you want to be away from the main path really and looking that way there's a lot more birch interspersed with a few oak and pine but over there apart from that big beech tree in the middle which could be an oak could be turning a little bit golden I think that's the direction we want to be heading. The trees are a little bit closer together and there's no real distinct path going through them so there's less chance of dogs, people and animals finding our little golden earth nuggets of joy. Come on old man, how you doing? We've not taken chance on every single walk that we've been on because if I go over kind of five miles he does start to develop a little bit of a limp and he is getting on now bless him but Reggie well he's young dumb and I would say full of cum but uh, yeah, yeah I'm afraid he's uh, he's had the chop haven't you young man 
but you've got to watch him you see he's non-stop buzzing around like this and very occasionally I'll spot a mushroom and I'll just be getting down to inspect it and have a look and he'll come zooming past me and he'll knock its head clean off yeah they were birch trees I thought they were but we're heading in the right direction and there is a wee path coming past these as well or track so I might just veer off slightly to the right and just skim around the edge of this oak and see if there's anything interesting over there well I made it over to the oak and you're probably sick of me saying it by now but here is quite a large ring Reggie's going to decapitate them all now I told you look at him quite a large ring of parasols starts here and it goes around the edge all the way around there around there there's one coming up look looks very much like a dinosaur there's one so I've got a mate who'd eat these I don't really I don't really want to pick them oh they're beautiful and young and fresh I don't think I can resist it I might take a couple these look like shaggy parasols to me so they need cooking before you eat them but yeah beautiful beautiful mushrooms look at this almighty beast massive beach I bet that came down with quite a crack that trunk must be probably two meters in circumference there's a big chunk of it over here and it's come across all the way across this track quite a big chunk of tree falling down there so you can see the lights coming up if you give us five minutes and the sun will be cresting on top of those trees over there and uh, I'll be walking directly into it without any sunglasses so I may be a little bit blind to spot any more any more fungi so I'll have to kind of hug the tree line a little bit so the sun isn't directly in my face but what a lovely morning we're just coming up to five to eight I think it was worth coming out so I decided on taking some of those shaggy parasols some people are going to complain in the comments that I'm collecting in a carrier bag well it's all I had with me little folded up carrier bag in me in my car exactly for mornings like this and I'm not gonna walk around with a bloody basket what do you take me for well, I just want to capture that Sun peak over the top I might just hold the camera and walk a little bit see it coming you can see the the light approaching across this and the wind as well of course I'm walking towards the tree line so it's essentially gonna extend the amount of time it's gonna take for that Sun to come over huh well, oh, hello. Oh, you know what? It's not Sep. It's another one of those uh, edibles. I'm sure this is an Amanita variety. Uh, it's growing re relatively close to some agarics over there. But I believe this is edible. I'm going to put it on the screen what I think it is, or I might have already done that on the previous time I saw it. 
But yeah, it's growing close to some agarics, some Amanita muscaris over here. And uh, there's a crab tree here as well. Crab apple tree. Right. Let's get back on that tree line. I'll probably just walk through this section here, look. Because there's some oak just here. Aha! Here we are. Yeah, I'm blind. I knew it was going to happen. Can't see a bloody thing. Step to the side. Get in the shade. No, it's not working now. It's well and truly up. There we go. There's my long shadow at 8 o'clock in the morning. Right, phone away. Let's do some fungi foraging. Well, we're back at the car. There's the Clumber Hotel, I believe that's what it's called. And uh, that's our haul. I did find another absolutely massive bullet, but I just picked it and walked. So I didn't get the camera out for that. There were a few others around it, but they were all a bit eaten. Uh, it's a bay bullet, if you're wondering. So let's go home and get these ready to go in the dehydrator. Well, I'm happy to announce that most of these don't have any maggots in. This one has a suspicious kind of core down at the base, so I've chopped a little bit off. This is the biggest one, so I've chopped it in half. And we're going to start taking slices of the cap to see what it's like. Now, that's the blade snagging up on there. But it looks insect free to me. So, the, the, the pores do stain olive green and bluey colour, which is completely natural. And this is a particularly wet uh, specimen. Of course, I collected it so early this morning. But if we just try and take a, a few s steady slices and have a look inside, you'll see that that's free of any grubs or larva uh, all the way down the stem. So that's good to go into the dehydrator. I'm pleased with that. That's the other side of it. This is a pink blush that they get, which is quite natural on the billets. And uh, it just kind of indicates you've got the right one. And if you are at all unsure, chop a little bit off. Have a bit of a nibble. And that just tastes like mushroom to me. It's certainly not bitter, so we don't have a bitter bullet. These are good to go. These are some of the other ones. This one looks a little bit raggedy now I've got it back. What's actually happened here is the caps of these parasols have rested on the spores, on the pores, and they've changed the colour of it a little bit. Well, that's fine, they do stain that colour. Now, the stems on the parasols aren't good eating, but the caps definitely are, so we'll process them in a second. Not sure about that one, the stem feels a little bit hollow. We'll have a look in there too. So here are the mushrooms from yesterday, dehydrated, as you can hear. So I'm just going to tip all of this carefully into this container. If I can get it all to move in, it's like it's stuck to the tray. Now these, I, I could dry them a little bit more, in fact I'll probably put them back in again, but I don't want to put these in with the fresh stuff and have them over dry. So these have been on for 12 hours already, so we'll, I need the trays as well for this new batch. So what I'm going to do is wait till the other lot has caught up and got to this stage and then we'll spread them out again on a tray if necessary and give them their final drying 
You see how the colour has changed, like a dark, meaty, dark green. They do look really quite good. You'll notice as well on this is part of the uh, the set. This one here. That's the stem, big bulbous stem. And here's some of the cap. You notice that it's not as dark green. It's a smaller specimen, but it doesn't stain as dark green as the babylets. The porcini mushrooms don't. Well, it's quite a nice collection there, isn't it? Right, we've still got these two to cut up. And then we've got to process these beautiful shaggy parasols. I'll probably just pull the stems out of these and leave them upside down. Oh, that's not going to come, is it? Oh, I'm breaking it all to pieces. But yeah, that's the plan anyway. And then uh, we'll let them stand upside down and let any bits of grit come out. Maybe do a spore print, I don't know. And then see if we can put them in a dish tonight. So unfortunately one of these specimens does have some distinct grub holes in it. So I'm not going to be drying this one. This larger one does have a few in the centre of the cap. But it ain't too bad. So I think what I'm going to do is spin him upside down. And we'll take slices off. And we'll inspect those slices and uh, take it as it comes, you see. That, in my opinion, looks fine. No grub. So we'll be drying this piece, but we'll not be, oh there's a bit of dried stuff already, we'll not be drying the other one unfortunately, which is a bit of a shame. And here we are several hours later. This has had, it's been on for about 13 hours now. And most of the stuff from this morning's dried up really quite well. And I've been able to, on a lot of the trays, push stuff to one side and compact it a little bit. And then I've put on all the rest of the stuff from yesterday's forage, which is up here. And that's gonna get now, a 10 hour shift but there we go every single draw if you like even though they're not very well spread out is full of shroomy goodness but that's it folks thanks for coming along with me today there will I'm sure be some more brewing videos when I get back into the brewery this weekend I'm up for a right treat I'm meeting up with new to homebrew Tom and his good wife Abby and Gemma and I are going over to York to enjoy the spoils of the city and when we return next week I'll be brewing a, fruit, a few beers for the run up to Christmas uh, so we can get the advent calendars back on the shop and hopefully I'll find the time and the inclination to make some videos of the brew days for you boys and girls so it would be nice of you to join me of course if you want a notification about this happening you must subscribe and you must click the bell icon and select all notifications otherwise you're probably going to miss out anyway thanks a lot we'll see you on the next one Hey, we might even get some clips from York. You'll get to see Tom. Nah, no, you don't want that, do you?